My Hero Academia, Season 6, Episode 20. That Shimura for you. Even in the afterlife. Wait, this, this Gran Torino speech. Over our choices. Out of all of them, he was the most direct about the idea of killing Shigaraki. Sometimes you have to kill a person in order to save them. Be sure to remember that. It's a very Whatever interesting line. you decide to do, you make damn sure you settle the score with the League of Villains. The phrasing of all that is really interesting. We're teaming up to end this. <laughs> the team is sort of unbelievable. Together, we'll keep anyone else from getting hurt. Together, right. Yeah, one of the most striking things about this was we the fact that Deku feels like an equal now. One. He's not their I protege anymore. To. He's one of the ultimate hero crew already. And, I mean, in my opinion, he's earned it. There's one thing in particular I disagree with about what Gran Torino says, but overall, I like his message. It's pretty clear where he stands. He's all for just taking Shigaraki out. And interestingly, one thing I read in the comments that I liked was maybe the fact that Deku takes his scarf is a representation of the fact that he hasn't totally excluded that as a possibility or something he has to do. We saw that in the last episode where he fought Muscular, where his line was basically, if you don't back down, you leave me no choice. So I don't think Deku has necessarily ruled that out. I just think it's not optimal. And I also personally am predicting that he will save Shigaraki because it's the most satisfying thing that could happen. But specifically, Gran Torino saying sometimes you have to kill someone to save them. For me, there's no real way I can spin that to a point where I can agree with it because killing Shigaraki is not at all saving him. It's just destroying him. If I had to try, I'd say the idea is that you save someone by ending their hellish existence. But I think what saving someone ought to mean, since so much of the value of human life lies in their potential, specifically potential for good, I think saving someone means returning them to the path where they are most aligned with achieving their potential in contribution and in service or alignment to the greater good, which is not just an abstract principle to me at least, but is something grounded in objective reality. Perhaps salvation can be found in death, but in that case, I don't think it's the death itself that causes the salvation, but perhaps the choices one makes on an individual level that maybe lead to death. Long time viewers of this channel will, will know my favorite example of this in a certain blonde haired character. What I do like about what Gran Torino says though, is I think there's a bigger awareness he has in, in his monologue to Deku, where he makes his opinion very clear, but also leaves it up to Deku and trusts in Deku to do what he feels is right. And I think that's probably what's best for Deku as a character and as a person. He needs to take everything in, you know? You need to listen to all your past avatars, all your mentors and teachers, etc. Look at that clearly, synthesize it into information that's useful, and then put that through the algorithm or the filter of what you actually are and what feels right to you. And Deku, to his credit, is not ignoring it. And again, it was pointed out to me that that might be the significance of him carrying the scarf, which also has the extra benefit of just looking badass. There she is, the monster. Oh, they're going the vigilantes. They're going too far. Oh, it's getting worse. It's getting way worse. They're on a witch hunt. You want us to let our guards down so you can attack? We're not stupid. We see you for what you are. Ooh, the citizens are becoming villains themselves. Listen, please calm down. Don't forget to smile. <laughs> please. Well, someone who looks like that shouldn't be out this late. What were we supposed to think? Wow, yeah, just, <laughs> just defer all that responsibility onto someone else. Well done, guys. All things considered, I feel like that went well. Usually people are that keyed up, very hard to talk them down. I don't know why I didn't think about that. There are just no lines anymore. Deku and company are fighting a war on so many different fronts at the same time. I don't know. The night just went wrong so fast. You know, I bet everyone else is scared too. Time for therapist, Deku. You think? He's got so many jobs. I'm sorry. I have to go now. Maybe you should escort her home. All night? Will you take her to the nearest shelter? I've been in one place for too long. Wait! Here! Oh, he's gotta keep moving, that's you. right. Damn, he's just so many things to keep track of at the same time. Pork cutlets to keep your energy levels up. Hell yeah. <laughs> Best support item. <laughs> Pork cutlets. How frustrating must this be for All Might, man? Just having to play bento delivery, man. Kinda feels like we traveled back in time. Yeah. In my day, we did our best to stay out of sight, because hiding from villains kept us alive. The police have their hands full with the jailbreakers, so they don't have the resources to investigate and the citizens, the apparently. Threats. Criminals are running amok out there. 
This has got some real Batman vibes. Gotham City. You know, we have gone back to old times. This is the second, third, fifth, whatever, coming of All for One. Maybe there's an instinct for some of the characters to feel like, what was the point of it all? But I think there's a silver lining in it, which is that, yeah, there's, you know, there's a saying history repeats itself and it does, but never in exactly the same way. Things shift on multiple axes. There's side to side motion, but also forward motion. So even in a state of tragedy, I think the positive way to look at it is that we're one step closer to solving it. There's a natural evolution to just about everything. And I do believe it's forward progress. You know, you can imagine that each iteration of problems that emerged is is a chance from which to solve things on stronger footing in a process that's almost inevitable. Looking at it in my hero academia terms, all solutions that came before were solutions to a particular problem, but were incomplete in that they left room for other problems or even created other problems. One of the things that's so amazing about the show is how clearly they've represented that. All Might was a solution that gave them a time of peace, but there was like a couple or at least one glaring critical flaw that they're now reckoning with. But this time they're reckoning with that problem. So in some very, very zoomed out perspective, it's not a loss. We're on the trajectory of solving for this evil, sort of. And it's that pursuit that's going to be very particular to Deku's hero story. I can't, like, prove this, right? I mean, this is just an idea. It's a theory. But I like to think this way. I think it gives me some hope, and it gives me some resilience towards things when they seem their bleakest. That all of the darkest periods are iterations, you know, they're, they're chances to hash these things out piece by piece. I believe it to ultimately be a, a strengthening process that is likely going to be a force for good. And it, it almost has to be, you know? Like, if a problem keeps reoccurring, it means a couple things. One, it means it's very complex. And two, it means that there's probably some short-term benefit to the the terribleness, to the traits or actions that lead to evil. Otherwise, they wouldn't they wouldn't keep perpetuating themselves. But in evolution, time is also a factor where things that are better or more holistically good long-term will emerge victorious. It just takes time. The light will win out. But in the meantime, there are going to be a lot of moments of darkness. You two better start helping out. You can't keep staring at the wall and ignoring us. We need your cooperation to unleash one for all's full potential. What skills are we missing? Banjo was the first. He released his quirk. And after, Shinomori followed suit. Banjo was a maverick. But we need everyone's support to bring its true strength to light. Hey kid! Wonder why they're holding Try back. Try getting more accustomed to the other quirks in the meantime. Especially Shinomori's and ends. Maybe you could also work on the quirk having pants. Now we're supposed to leave everything up to this boy who wants oh, to save our enemy? That's interesting. It's absurd. Is that really how you feel? That's interesting. <laughs> Indeed, it is interesting, isn't it? He was the first recipient. You reached your hand out to me. If you hadn't chosen to save a potential enemy, none of this would have ever happened. I think he's carrying on a legacy in more ways than I knew. The power only became what it is because you were willing to reach out. He's sold. He's in. <laughs> oh, they're both in. Damn. That was some speech. Very dramatic turning. The stage is set for the grand finale. <laughs> this is awesome. We're all united now. The true power of one for all. This is going to take Deckard to new heights. Love it. Hang on, boy. Look at them at his back <laughs> while he's eating his pork cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's so cool. That was a very eventful lunch. Episode 20, Hired Gun. Seems very fitting that the lineage started with an act of mercy as well. It's really cool how this is an arms race from Shigaraki and All For One's perspective. They gain from resting, but they also lose because Deku's getting exponentially stronger as time passes. Hooks. It's legit just the battle gun. Fiber fire. Fire. Ah! Ah! Oh, I just killed him. All right, <laughs> it's fine. Sure. You caused this mess. I'm aware of that, which is why I'm here now. Light work for Hawks and Best Genus. As usual, there's nothing connecting these escapees to our actual target. You'd think we would have been, been able to get that. some intel by this point in the search. We'll double down our efforts. We'll just throw a pipe at Endeavor? Wow. Bold of you. Bold of all of you. Take a good look at this town! You turned it into hell! Endeavor, let's go. This takes a lot of emotional fortitude to have everyone against you like this. Stay away from us! See your face makes me sick! Again, I mean, I get it, but you gotta direct this energy at the villains. Let's put some distance between us. Deku has enough of a burden to carry as it is. That actually concerns Even me most of all. Who chose this solitary path. We're still using him as bait to draw out the league. The least we can do is not make things worse for him. I think this is the worst thing for him. If I were all for one, I'd go on the offensive. 
Right now, Same. his priority is taking over Shigaraki's body, like Deku said. Right, yeah, it's a, gotta pick the perfect timing. Optimal point between recovery and offense. My question is, why is Shigaraki's hatred such an important component in this? The force of that feeling is vital. With eight people's minds fighting back inside one for all, you need a powerful will to overcome them. I see, unifying force. You'd think he'd be carrying around more than enough hatred for the successors already. It would appear his spite simply isn't enough. Well, maybe he just doesn't have any. I'm going off my gut here, but despite everything, doesn't it seem like the guy's always laughing? Yeah, that's a good point. He's pretty affable. They're trying to avoid a fight, so let's use that to our advantage. I'm with best genius on this, for sure. Yeah, come to think of it, All for One is kind of a goofball. He's sinister in action, but not really disposition. He's another one of those villains that's just having a great time. This is way out there, but I wonder if the show is making some kind of comment on will. Maybe the good is something consciously chosen and fought for, and the evil is kind of the more lizard, more ancient, automatic, unthinking, animalistic. Shigaraki definitely has a will, and that's what All for One is tapping into, but it's not exactly the same, and I think that's why it's worth redeeming, because there's part of it that, is, that comes from a goodness, like a lost child that just got misdirected. Going back a little bit, this might be nothing, but the conclusions Endeavor reached about Deku concerned me a little bit because another thing that I thought was interesting that came up in comments last time was about the strain put on Deku. Personally, I think that Deku is the kind of person that can handle the strain. I mean, not to say it won't take its toll. It won't be easy. Not saying he won't have crises. What concerns me more about this is the isolation. I think that Deku's the kind of person that does best when he's grounded to other people. The emotional strain gets way more dangerous if he's just constantly alone all the time, seeing the worst of humanity. Maybe that's where the, the friends come in. Someone's got to decide to stick it out with him. He's still on the move. Where are they getting all these cool vehicles? I recommend a solid night's sleep on a sublime mattress. Night eye. I'm trying. It's a very poignant flashback, throwback. Oh, damn. What the hell? The most dangerous quirk of all. Gun. Crap. What is this, a unified attack? Little boy dressed in green. You're coming with me. A new villain appears. This is it. We knew it was coming. A jailbreaker we just didn't know from who or from where. Him. You keep your limbs. Oh, it's Sniper Wolf. I think we've seen her in the intro. Little boy dressed in green. Who's that just dead on the, on the side? Is the sniper like attached to her body? Sort of her quirk? There's one woman we should be worried about. So she was on our radar already. But Deku, if the two of you ever cross paths, run like hell. Fast oh, as you can. damn. What a warning. Such great setup. Spider sense coming in extra useful. Because otherwise he'd just her, dead. A former public safety commission hero. Oh, she's a converted Lady hero. Gaunt. The villain. Lady Gaunt? Why bother running when you're already mine? Oh, she can curve bullets too. She's What's that movie? Angelina Jolie. Oh, her. She's insane. If she weren't around, I'd be the best long Oh sure my god. No oh my god, that is the most terrifying thing they could have done. <laughs> Snipe is afraid of her. The ultimate just shoot him in the kneecap hero. Where is Snipe? I feel like he'd be very useful right now. Can't choose where the shot hits and it don't pack much punch, but not too shabby, right? I think some villain's kneecaps would argue otherwise. Her quirk is rifle and she's the walk-in personification of a sniper rifle. Everybody who shoots targets is jealous of her right arm. Do you believe Mr. Snipe love can bloom on the battlefield? A good firing rate. She's put her mark on him. <laughs> Where's Pops? They need to hurry to him right now. Yeah, yeah. After I'm finished with this, it's time to hide. The target will see you. She just drags on her brother. Maybe I should have ditched him before. Come on, walk faster. Do you want to be locked up again? Must find him. Wait a second. Oh my god, that took me forever to realize. Sorry. <laughs> you know, anime faces. It's overhaul. The arm should have given it away a lot sooner. What's their connection? He's not looking great. Some initial predictions about this villain. She's not irredeemable. Looks like her treatment of overhaul is part of the sympathetic look at her. But also, she was a former... What do they call it? She was aligned with the heroes previously. Something about that made her disillusioned and rogue. And maybe there's going to be something to that. Maybe there's something legitimate to what she saw in service. What is wrong with this guy? Ah, He's been through some the stuff. Wild hero. The lovely Lady Nagant. Nagant. My request is simple, 
I would like you to bring the boy to me. Alive. A number of annoying guardians will be watching over him from afar. It would be wise to get him alone before you make your move. Nero's made that easy for him, unfortunately. Though I understand their argument. Did I say I agreed to be your pawn? Right, she also have a mind of her own. You once killed a hero. <laughs> An ally. Ooh, who was it? A friend of yours? No. Something's broken in him. But I thought he might be useful. He is also a victim. Driven to ruin by these corrupt false heroes. That's not how I remember it. Is that how that went down? That's one way to put it, I guess. I seem to remember a certain highway scene where the heroes were not present. The more I listen, the more I feel like Lady Nagant is going to be a trial run for Deku in his attempt to understand villains and bring them around. Consider this power an advance. He enhanced her powers. Airwalk. Nice. Oh, Airwalk plus Sniper. That's crazy. I have a mission to complete. All right, I kind of like her. I don't know, I don't get really good villain vibes from her. She's a threat, obviously, but feels like she's misguided more than evil. I'm wondering what it is she saw, and what she experienced in her hero society work that led her to want to see its destruction and to actually kill a comrade. That was an awesome episode. This dark Deku arc is going to be great. I can already tell. It's so different, but it, it's really nice. It's really fun. Very exciting. For me, My Hero Academia is a show about heart, and there's a mistake an arc like this could make, which is losing that, you know, or thinking that grittiness, darkness is in itself some kind of wisdom, you know, but I have enough faith in the show. I mean, I, I know for a fact that instead what this is, is exploring the darkness as a test of their heart. There are a lot of concerns for me, like Deku's solitude, though I don't think he'll be alone for long. Obviously the fact that they're fighting a war on multiple fronts, but I suspect, I just get the, the feeling that this is going to be an opportunity for Deku to explore a villain's past like he's been wanting to. That's been a big part of his reflections recently. Maybe I could have done more to understand the people I was fighting. And there was that shot of Gentle Criminal, which was maybe the first time he actually did that successfully. So this is maybe an opportunity to explore that, but while also having the villain herself seem very formidable, highly skilled. I've been joking since season one that the, the most terrifying quirks were guns and here we are. Better than kneecap sniper.